So I want to tell you a little bit about my brothers, Derek and Sean, who are my very best friends and struggled on the streets with me before I found a way to transform my life. I want you to know them because they are what happens on the other side of the spectrum. When a young person hears all the right things but has so much trauma, drama, and pain that they can't believe for a second that some adult would care enough about them to paint a different picture of their possibilities. My two brothers, Derek and Sean, are serving life sentences now because although they heard the same words that I did, they couldn't quite believe it was possible. And what you need to understand is you don't have to decide whether it's true or not. You just have to believe, and a young person has to decide whether it's true. And that's the great gift of what we do. Why is it important to have relationships with young people? I think that there are two pieces to this. First, there's the value that we provide to young people by building those close relationships, becoming a caring adult, and giving them guidance in their difficult times. There's also data that shows clearly that those of us who work inside of facilities, when we build relationships that are powerful, strong adult youth relationships, it reduces the possibility of, of harm and hurt, emotionally and physically, not just to the young people, but to the staff and all the folks that we work with. And so it's important across the board that we make this a part, not a, an add-on to the work we do, but a core part of the work we do serving young people. I always say that the R plus R equals R, the three R rule. Everybody in school talks about reading, writing, and arithmetic, but, but this is respect, relevance, and relationship. Respect plus relevance equals relationship. If we have the ability to respect a young person where they are, not just to deal with their reality, but to understand that they are human beings going through their own transitions and their own difficulties, and to still value them as people. Right? People don't lose humanity because of bad choices. And that's one of the difficult things that we have to deal with in our setting sometimes. We start to label young people as the thing they did, not the person they are. So respect is very important. And you have to give it in order to get it. I have so many staff that say, well, they have to respect my authority. Well, actually, we have to provide them a reason to respect our authority. And once we do that and we have relevance, which means we understand them well enough to actually speak to them about their circumstance, not ours, not our opinion of their circumstance, but who they are and where they are culturally, socially, emotionally, then we have the ability to really build a relationship and to create a possibility where other people think there are no possibilities. So three R's are important. And I always say every child should leave our systems, our care, more whole, not with more holes. Our job is to make them better having touched us, to give them relevance, to create the idea that they are ready to move forward in the world because they came to us who are youth care workers, right? You're not corrections officers. You're not, you know, the, the man. You are the next person with the possibility of creating something great with a child who hasn't experienced great very often. My Angela once said, I did then what I knew how to do. Now that I know better, I do better. For me, there's a couple of meanings for that, and that's my own life journey, but also as a, as a youth worker, a young person coming up through programs, as an administrator and as a leader of programs and organizations, I understand that the work that we have done traditionally at command and control with young people in, in sort of confined settings, we thought that was the right thing to do. But now we have all this data, and you've watched the other presenters, and you've heard everybody talk about how important it is for us to have relationship and a different relationship than we have historically with young people because we want to get a different outcome than historically we have gotten with young people. And so we know better now, and the data and the statistics and all of the research tells us that we have to do this different. So let's talk about, I'm going to move straight to the youth care workers can provide caring relationships, positive and high expectations, and opportunities to participate and contribute. Caring relationships, I think we've covered pretty good. The idea that you have to know someone more than their number, more than their offense, more than their worst day in order to really build a relationship. You know, there has to be compassion. There has to be ability to, you actually have to like young people to do this work. I don't know how many times I've said that and actually warned people, they should probably go and do something where they work with machines or cars because if you don't like children, you cannot do this work well because there has to be a relationship there. There has to be high expectations. Just because this is the furthest they've ever reached doesn't mean this is where you hold the bar. Hold them up to a great expectation with the promise that you will help them reach that expectation. You will teach them and provide them the training and the support and the nurturing that will allow them at least the possibility, not the guarantee, but the possibility that they might actually reach that height someday. 
And then we have to talk about opportunities, especially in confined settings. There are so many rules that it's hard to provide opportunities for young people to take leadership roles, for young people to, to be engaged in decision making. But we individually can make those choices for young people and allow them that space so that then they can grow and practice what we want them to do in the real world and be comfortable in that setting. What does it look like? That's always the question. Social emotional learning is an important part of my own processing in the world. The ability to order my world, to understand myself well enough to value other people. That's a core piece of it. Understand mood management, to, to motivate myself, to have empathy for other people in crisis and pain and make sure that mine isn't the greatest issue in my life. I can recognize difficulty in other people and value it and to manage relationships. And so, so those are the core pieces of SEL and they also coincidentally bind very closely to this positive youth development idea that you've heard so much about. Because actually those two together create the total continuum of support that we can provide a young person for their greatest possibility. And so I want you to understand that this is the piece where you have to go out and seek knowledge. Because you need to know this and there's great research out there that you can get access to that will help you every day move forward.